I make a soup this week and it's amazing. Next week, you know, I'll, I'll be thinking or in a couple of weeks, oh, maybe I should do the soup I did before. So I'm thinking of the sample. I'm going to be dropping three songs from now. I'll remember how it was, how it tasted, how it looked. But you know what I'm going to do this time? I'm going to add a little certain extra spice of this or the bass line I'm going to bring in. Okay, we need a vocal in four songs from now. I thought about it all week and it's finally coming together. Put it out, it's beautiful. The waiter brings it out and it all comes down to that first bite, that first look. The velvet touch. My beginnings were at university clubs. That's where I started actually the kitchen hole thing, you know. I was a dishwasher in high school. And I remember I was a busboy and I used to look down and see the DJ and uh, just, I was in awe of the DJ always. He had all the attention, playing the music, he was the party guy. So I was always juggling, you know, the, the restaurant lifestyle with the DJing and, I, you know, I started to learn the DJing. I became friends with the DJ at the time, Mr. Fiaz Walji. He, he managed to convince the management to give me a Monday night, and that's how it started. It just catap catapulted from there. It was more around 95, the 94, 95 time, and I started to make a name for myself with the house music, and it was the early days of house, mm -hmm. right? And it started to blow up, so I worked at Icon in Ottawa. It was pretty iconic. In Montreal, a few really, really amazing clubs. I got to play at Stereo, which is world-renowned still to this day. I think that's where people started to hear me, and I got to play for a lot, a lot of great people. That all changed uh, maybe about only five years ago. The DJing was getting a little monotonous for me. The music thing is hard. So I wanted a change, you know, I decided to go back to my love, my second love, my second passion, which is cooking. The way I see a dish is I look at every component on a dish. A lot of places, they, you know, the, the star would be the protein and you'll have mashed potatoes and just a veg. Where me, I look at every component. I want it to be an experience, like every little taste that they have off of that plate is going to bring them to another level. Protein would be a, a nice rib steak. And in the DJ world, it would be maybe the baseline. Garnish would be uh, cilantro or a nice basil on top of your dish, where in the music world, it would be vocal samples. The rush in the club would apply the same way. So the rush in a restaurant would be your dinner service between six and eight, where all hell's broken loose. Your restaurant is full. There's 10 people in your kitchen, whereas in the music world, it would be the same thing. It would be that peak hour where you can't move in the club, the energy is there, and people just want to get their dance fix on. That would be the rush. Being a perfectionist, there's things, you know, like, oh, geez, I shouldn't have put that one, with, you know, that track with that track. I should have put it, you know, I should have waited, or I played it too soon. With food, it's kind of the same thing, too, you know? Like, that dish has to go out. Sometimes I'll actually sneak out and just to see if there's, if there's something I made and I'm really excited about, I'll sneak out just to see their expression when they get it. Being a DJ, that's my big reward as well, is just having a room full of people smiling, laughing, enjoying your beats. It's about serving the platters that matter. A platter being a, you know, a 12 inch vinyl, you know, like this track, I can't wait to play it, it's gonna be awesome. And I wanna see their expressions and, and where this can bring them, you know? And the same with food, right? I think here is where I've evolved and it's my love of everything, you know, and it's finally coming together and we're splashing it out. You better feel me.